Hello everyone, today it's the Nissan LEAF 40 kilowatt hours turn on the 350 kilowatt charger. Let's check it out. Now this charge is using the 350 kilowatt charger up at Coochin Creek. Uh, that's the EV brand charger and it does have a Chardamo plug that can handle I believe 200 amps so it should be able to charge any uh, Chardamo uh, vehicle with uh, no problem at all and max that out. So the Nissan Leaf is not uh, a new EV into the market when it comes to overall EV sales but the 40 kilowatt hour has only just come to Australia in August of 2019 having previously been released to the rest of the world around the beginning of 2018. This one is owned uh, by Steve who owns a company called Solar Drive and essentially they uh, hire out cars to people in apartment buildings that have solar panels on the roof and um, charge per kilometre and that's uh, not a bad business model and they're planning on expanding and having a lot of EVs. So uh, check out the link to their website in the description below. Okay, so in preparation for this video, Steve uh, got in his leaf at 99%. It had been charged pretty much overnight and he drove it up the coast uh, along the highway and we're currently in the summer, so it's quite a hot time of year. The ambient temperature was 34, and he got to the charger on 14%. So normally I'd like to start charging a bit lower than 14%. Uh, it wasn't the case on this day, but uh, we were expecting to see... I, I didn't know what to expect, to be honest. I thought it would be maybe over 50 kilowatt, but what actually happened is the 40 kilowatt that it started at, it just holds 40 kilowatt the whole time and as the pack voltage goes up the amperage just drops down and just holds that speed up until 65 percent which uh, i found uh, a bit unusual because previous uh, research that i looked at showed that it would actually trend upwards a little bit uh, towards 46 kilowatt which isn't a fantastic speed to be honest but um, nevertheless I'm not entirely sure whether or not uh, any of the hot day has played a factor in this and I'll have to see if I'm about doing a, a charge on a cooler day to see if it is in fact um, affecting the, the charging speed. But as you can see on the chart, what has happened is it gets to 65% and then gradually goes down for another 10% down to about 75-76%. And after 75%, it basically just tails away to nothing at a very slow speed. Let's have a little look at the video editing software just to see how the percentages all play out. And if we have a closer look at what happened at the end of the charge, we can see that it finishes on the charger at 89%, but in fact it was 90%. So I'm not sure why it does that. Maybe just the BMS is... Uh, telling it still 89 hasn't ticked quite over but there was definitely a gap there equal to 1% uh, that equals uh, that it was at 90% so recommendations for driving with the leaf the overall range in Australia with the warmer temperature is probably around about what the what the advertised range is of 270 but a bit warmer temperature is probably more like 280 but when that's on the highway, your consumption is going to be a bit higher. So you're probably looking maybe even down in the low 200s. So charging, if you're driving down to around about 15%, and I wouldn't charge up past 75% if you can handle uh, getting to the next charger with that percentage, which is probably going to be about 120, 130 kilometres. So if you can make it there, then just stop at 75 and hit the road. So what are my final thoughts on the Nissan Leaf 40 kilowatt hour? Well, as a car, I don't believe there's any issue with it uh, other than what we know is some problem with possible battery degradation 
due to only having passive cooling and no thermal management. Everyone's pretty much well aware of that. And I mean, I would be choosing the Ionic over the Leaf every day of the week just on that factor alone. But uh, when you compare it to the Kona's 76 kilowatt, the standard range plus 100 kilowatt charging speed, Model 3 performance is getting like 190 with possible upgrade to into the 250s. Like 40 kilowatts just doesn't cut it these days and it's enough to get by but it's just not the 2019, 2020 standard that we're, we've come to expect. So hopefully you found this interesting and I'll leave you there and see you on the next one. And now it's time for me to take care of my thermal management.